Hey, bud. What you doing? Just hanging out? Alright. Here, I'm gonna set these up here. You keep an eye on them, okay? You check those out. You didn't want to help? <laughs> There's the ceiling. Don't drop it now. What's going on everybody? I'm Average Joe and welcome to another Average video where again, we're gonna be doing some more Average testing on the Sirius 415 watt bifacial solar panels. Today's video is hopefully gonna be really, really quick uh, because we're outside, there's all the bugs and all the extra noises, which I don't really like in videos. So we're gonna try to make this video short and sweet and to the point. So what we're gonna be doing is testing the bifacial solar panels over a white tarp. We may do some moving around on the tarp to see if that does any difference. I don't know, we'll just mess around and see what we can get. All right, so I just made up a little tiny two by four stand and I've got the panel about a foot and a half off the ground and then we're at a 30 degree slope, which is a pretty average angle for solar panels, okay? And of course, we're gonna be using the Eljoy solar panel tester. Again, the model number is EY1600W. All right, so we're just gonna be testing one panel on the little tiny rack I made and then I did bring out the shattered panel that I broke on the very first day within the first, you know, 10 minutes, uh, we might as well test that one too. All right, let's get to it. All right, setup is right here. Basically we have our solar panel sitting on our solar panel rack, and this is a 30 degree angle right here. We're a little over a foot off the ground right there. And then we have a, I forget what size it is. It's like a nine by 10 white tarp. I do have a couple of sticks on here because we are getting a little bit of wind blowing it over. So hopefully that doesn't interfere with our tests. The time now is 1.30 PM. We do have sunny skies out right now. So this test should be, it should work out pretty good. Just like last time, we'll take a couple of temperature readings. So the outdoor temperature is 82 degrees. 
I'm gonna use my little temperature sensor right here. That actually says 130 degrees freedom, 54 degrees, and then I'll just get up here and take some other averages. So 126, 130, 128, 131, 130. I would say the average is 130 degrees freedom. So this is how much light and shade we have underneath the panel right now. I got my wires ran right over here and I'm gonna be out of the way as much as possible so I don't mess up any of the tests. All right, and I did grab some cardboard. That way we can put it underneath the bottom of the solar panel. I'm gonna slide this under. The only thing we have on here now is this piece of cardboard basically covering the entire panel except for a little tiny strip on each side. All right, here we go. Positive and negative. Get that plugged in. All right, we're basically getting about 370, is that right? 370 watts? 370 watts basically from the top side of the panel okay so what i'll do next is remove that piece of cardboard so we can make use of the lower side the bifacial side and see what the gains actually are now we're getting 401.1 watts 28 volts under load and 14.11 amps all right, so that was about a 25 to 30 watt gain 411 watts we got uh, 28 volts under load and our amps are 14.35. That's the most I've seen out of these panels so far. All right, I'm just gonna throw some shade over the white areas on the side to see if that skews our results any. I'm not gonna cover all of it, but I'm gonna cover a good portion of it. Okay, we're at 382. Let me show you what I've covered so far. I put a piece of cardboard covering that edge over there. And then I've got a piece of cardboard right here and a piece of foam right there. Okay, so that's all we have that is reflective. It's just a little bit of white up here, directly underneath the panel, and then up there towards the front. We haven't been able to see, you know, 500 or anything like that. Um, you know what I might do real quick is I'm just gonna rotate this panel on its side and we'll see if that makes a difference. If I don't, if I don't drop it. This panel is definitely hot. I don't know if that will change anything at all, but we might as well give it a try, right? All right, we'll hit auto MPPT. Yeah, 403.5 watts. It's basically the same. 407, that's a tiny bit of improvement. All right, so what I'm going to attempt to do real quick is just rotate this whole array a little bit, maybe to simulate, you know, like it's five o'clock in the afternoon or something like that, as long as I don't mess up too much stuff. And it doesn't break. All right, we'll just do that. All right, so we're gonna simulate that, whatever that is. All right, so now we are basically sitting at south southwest in comparison to the sun. Okay, we got 346.8, 27 volts under load, and 12.5 amps. Let's say that's not too bad. It only dropped down about 50. 55 watts. All right, I'm going to turn it even more. That's something you guys would like to see. I don't know. Okay. All right, I have the panel facing west now. We're gonna test this and see what this does. Even though I don't think this is gonna be a 100% accurate test because the sun is still really high in the sky. You know, this would be really good if the sun was like way over there. You know, if this was like five or six o'clock in the afternoon. That would be a better test, but I don't think I'm gonna sit out here and wait for that. So anyway, we'll see what this does. Uh, looks like we're getting 275.6. So we're down 125 watts right now. But what I could do is put the cardboard back behind the panel again, and we can see how far that drops down. All right, so this is how we're sitting right now. We are facing west. I've got a good portion of the panel covered. Uh, this side keeps falling out, uh, basically because my cardboard is just a little bit too long. So we're gonna leave it there and just let it hang. But that's okay because this is north and the sun is coming from that way, all right? So we have a good portion of the panel covered up. All right, so it looks like we're getting 251.9 watts, 29 volts under load and 8.5 amps. Okay, that's what the backside covered up. All right, next thing we're gonna do is test the shattered panel. All 
All right, time now, if you can see it, it is 2.14 p.m. and the temperature has gone up just a few degrees. It's 84 degrees, but feels like 88. Okay, so we'll do a couple temperature checks again. That only says, oh, you know what? This was sitting out in the sun, so it might not test correctly. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna test correctly. My bad, it's probably gonna be around the same temperature as the last panel, which was 130 degrees. And just so everybody knows, obviously it is shattered right down there really bad. And then again, up there on the top, really bad. The rest of it is just shattered glass across the entire panel. I did get a couple of comments or quite a few comments seeing if I could somewhat repair this with some lacquer or some sort of you know, filler and maybe save the panel a little bit. I could do that, but I don't think I'm going to waste my time because all the cells inside are basically cracked as well. So with a panel like this, I mean, I guess if this is your only source of power, you know, in the world, sure, you know, go ahead and try to repair it, repair away. And same for the back side, even though that side doesn't really look broken or shattered, uh, basically where these big smash points are on the top and bottom, the whole back side is creased. So again, the bottom side is basically all the cells are cracked everywhere down there as well. Okay, anyway, uh, let's see what kind of power we're making. All right, we'll hit auto. All right, that's not too bad. 171.4, 26 volts under load and 6.59 amps. Honestly, that's not too bad at all. I thought it was gonna be a little worse than that. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is put the cardboard on the back side of the panel and we'll see how much it drops. All right, shattered panel. We have the cardboard on the back side, basically covering up the entire thing, except for a little tiny strip on both sides. All right, so that dropped it down to 141.9 watts, 26 volts under load, and 5.4 amps. Honestly, that didn't really go down that much. You know, 20, 25 watts, 30 watts. Huh, crazy. All right, well, I think that's going to conclude my test. All righty, so there we go. It does look like if you add some sort of white reflective material underneath the bifacial panels, from my testing, you know, my average testing out there, we, we kind of got an average of 10% gain uh, from having the cardboard removed from the back side of the panel, except for the shattered panel. That one was more like 17%, even though it didn't really seem like it, but uh, that one was a pretty big different. And that is, of course, if my maths are correct, which you can definitely correct me down in the comments section. All right, so there was a few other comments that suggested maybe using some sort of tinfoil or, you know, something like that. I was going to use one of those solar blankets, but I couldn't find where I put mine. I've had one for a really long time. I just don't know what I did with it. I really just didn't want to order another one and just have to wait for that to show up. But again, I mean, how many people are going to put tinfoil or solar blankets underneath your solar array? I guess if the gains were, were even more than having white rock or a white tarp underneath, I guess maybe you probably would. I don't know. Do we really need to test that? I don't know. If you guys really think that should be tested, Make sure you put those down in the comments, and if there's quite a few that say definitely test with tinfoil or a solar blanket or something similar to that, I'll do the test again. One thing I guess I probably should have done actually is threw that rack out in the grass and did it from there because I think that would be a little more accurate. I don't know, I just threw it in the driveway because that's just what seemed, seemed logical at the time. Okay, so if I, if I really need to redo the test in the yard, I'll redo it if there's enough comments recommending or suggesting the tinfoil type material. Okay, I'll do the white tarp again and then we'll add the tinfoil or whatever and I'll do the test again. Okay, and then also I was thinking with the shattered panel, I mean, I did get a lot of comments seeing if I could repair it somehow with some sort of material. Again, like I said, basically all the cells inside are cracked. I mean, it's not really worth saving, but I guess, again, if there's enough comments suggesting some sort of good repair, then I will attempt that. And this is really only, you know, this is only for you guys and another video to make. 
pretty much. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother with it. I just I just leave it how it is. I mean, it's there's not I don't think it's really going to improve that much. But if the suggestions are there, I will test it. All right, and then one last thing before I go, I still haven't been able to get the advertised 539 watts, you know, to include the top and bottom side. Um, out of these panels. I don't know if that's due to like my testing conditions, you know, sun angle, you know, it seems like there's always a little bit of haze in the sky. I don't think I'll ever get 539 watts. Um, you know, the temperature is pretty warm outside, you know, maybe I could potentially retest one of these panels if I haven't mounted them yet, or I guess even if I have mounted them. Uh, we could retest this when the panels are much colder because I know in the winter time these panels are going to produce a hell of a lot better than they are right now. Okay, well if anybody has any other questions, comments, suggestions, make sure you put those down below. If this video is helpful in any way, make sure you like that smash button on your way out and I will see you on the next <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't think you would let me get that close.